wasn't to treat Islam differently or Muhammad. It was to treat Islam exactly the same way that secular free people have the right to talk about every religion. Oh. And, and this gentleman and others are trying through the front door. Some people through the front door with Kalashnikovs and others through the back door with this kind of weasel oh, talk. Yes, yes. What they do is try to make one religion free from being able to be criticised and it well, must be stopped. Well, people that are so sensitive. You are about to see Douglas Murray completely silence a Muslim scholar on free speech. The debate you are about to see took place a few years ago following the incident of a journalist in France who got killed by Muslim extremists because of producing a cartoon character of the Prophet Muhammad. Many Muslims found that act offensive even though they live in France, a liberal country where everyone is supposed to have the freedom to criticize or even make fun of any religion. This begs the question of whether some Muslims can even be integrated in liberal countries, like France seeing that they adhere to a fundamentalist interpretation of Islam. This is an issue that Douglas Murray has been addressing and warning about for years. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Well, first of all, we have to remember what's going on here. This is an attempt, a very clear, a very bloody attempt, to impose Islamic blasphemy law in France and across Europe. And it has to be stopped. That's why these men did it. That's why the journalists of Charlie Hebdo are dead. An attempt to impose Islamic blasphemy law in Paris. The problem is that unless uh, you have an I am Spartacus, as you say, tactic on it, um, it's not worth any one individual or any one, well, let's put it this way, no one publication uh, doing it because, you know, after the Danish cartoons affair, Charlie Hebdo was the only paper in the world, really, that continued to say it is our right as secular French citizens to draw, lampoon, laugh at, write about whatever we want. We're free people in a free society. They were the only ones who held on to that. And uh, obviously on Wednesday morning we know what happened as a result. So any one publication would, I think, undoubtedly put its staff at uh, considerable risk. That's why, that's why I've suggested this week, um, repeated what Ayan Hersi Ali said after the Danish cartoons affair. We have to spread the risk around. The free press in the free world has to spread the risk around. Our freedoms hang on this. It cannot be left to a single individual or a single publication, a single satirical magazine, to hold the line for all of our freedoms. <laughs> Douglas Murray's stance shines a light on a complex challenge facing the Western world today. At the heart of this debate is the profound difference in foundational values between Western societies, which hold free speech as a paramount right, and Islamic societies where blasphemy laws often impose strict limits on what can be said, especially about religion. Western democracies pride themselves on the freedom of expression, believing it to be the cornerstone of a free and healthy society. This belief isn't just cultural. It's embedded in legal frameworks. For instance, the First Amendment in the United States Constitution guarantees individuals the right to express themselves without government interference or regulation. On the other hand, in many Islamic countries, blasphemy laws are enforced with stringent penalties, including imprisonment, fines, and in some cases, death. These laws are not only a tool for maintaining religious respect, but also a mechanism of control, stifling dissent and debate within society. A Pew Research Center findings suggest that a significant portion of Muslims living in Western countries still hold conservative views about blasphemy and freedom of speech. For example, a survey found that in some Western countries, a notable number of Muslims believe that there should be a criminal penalty for criticism of Islam. This viewpoint challenges the very foundation of Western free speech norms and creates a societal dichotomy that is difficult to reconcile. Raza Nadim, I come to you because you are scowling. Yeah, because I disagree with everything you said so far. Because everything, you know, yeah, most of what you said, because I stopped listening after a while because it just didn't make sense. When he talks about um, we should, um, you know, the news, um, Charlie Hebdo published whatever they wanted. That's rubbish. They were overtly racist towards Muslims. They were always lampooning Arabs and being overtly racist in most of the publications and the it smacks of hypocrisy because they were prepared in the name of freedom of speech to sack um, a journalist who wrote a column that they considered to be anti-Semitic. So how come there's a line there but when it comes to Muslims, I, doesn't matter, take it on the chin, why I, are we treated differently from just, others? Could I just answer that? He was charged it, with a hate it, crime it, as well. Sorry, it's really rich. There are 12 people dead. 
Oh, for please, no, 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 don't try to use their deaths. No. Just don't, please, just don't not, try, because I just give you an example me, where I, they did, no, no, let me finish my point. Like, the, the clear you example point, then I'll do where they don't care for freedom of speech. Okay, okay on that example, I'll start giving it more. Douglas will address that example. If he doesn't, we'll make a dozen, And then I'll come back to you and ask you another question. A dozen people were killed and they're now being smeared as racists like this gentleman here. And I think that's intolerable. No, I did not. He clearly knows nothing about Charlie Hebdo. I just gave you an example. Nothing about France. Nothing about French traditions of free speech. Charlie Hebdo is a left-wing, anti-racist publication. It has lampooned and does lampoon everybody. In recent years, it has taken particular delight in lampooning. The most, the most of the attacks on Charlie Hebdo, the, the non-physical attacks, have been from the Catholic Church, repeated attempts to criminalise Charlie Hebdo for what it says about the Pope. Marine Le Pen, the far-right wing leader, is one of the main targets of their satire. You don't understand anything. I just okay. gave you an example. Let me ask you, now. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. And then uh, thereafter, we're going, to, we're going to spread uh, the love, OK? <laughs> uh, as it were. Um, Raza, I mean, Douglas touches on this. France has a long, some would say fantastic, uh, certainly very proud tradition of vulgar and rude and anti-religious uh, cartoons. Isn't it a, a cultural imposition for a minority to seek to change that? Muslims Answer that question. In France, in 2006, a rapper was prosecuted for saying, I want to urinate on Napoleon. So where is this, um, you know, oh, in believing in a oh, person, explain. you know, we can offend whoever we want. It's rubbish. Muslims are being asked to believe in freedom of speech more than others are because in France they're prepared to prosecute no. an individual on that basis. They've, be they've banned comedians that are considered to be anti-Semitic. Now mm. I'm saying it's right, if someone's being anti-Semitic, mm. stop them. But why, when we're saying someone is being Islamophobic and anti-Muslim, we're saying we're taking the chin. Is there, why are we treated differently? Is there, <laughs> if it's unacceptable, as many people feel it is, many people find it deeply offensive to see cartoons of the, of the Muslim Muslim Prophet Muhammad. Is there any way in which it is acceptable to poke fun at Islam? If you want to poke fun, no one really cares. But the thing is, this isn't about poking We're fun. We're not talking about they cartoons. Really do, is there yeah, any well, way? No, hang on. No, this wasn't about poking fun. This case is being painted as a freedom of speech issue, and it's clearly linked to the war on terror. Oh, if you look at the, the, cartoon, the, the killers, what they say, we're part of Al-Qaeda. It wasn't a cartoon that riled them up. It was, it was foreign policy why? and the war Sorry. on terror. No, why no, why no, do no, you... Let me take the Muslim scholar's comparison between anti-Semitic acts and criticism or satire of Islam conflates two fundamentally different concepts, race and religion. Race is an immutable characteristic. Individuals cannot choose or change their ethnic background. Anti-Semitic acts target individuals based on their ethnic origin, which they have no control over. This targeting is inherently discriminatory and serves no purpose other than to demean and marginalize. Religion, however, is a set of beliefs and practices. Unlike race, religion involves personal choice. People can adopt, change, or renounce religious beliefs. Criticizing or making satirical comments about a religion or any belief system is a critique of ideas, not an attack on an immutable characteristic of a person. As such, it falls under the purview of free expression. Murray and many others in the sphere of public debate argue that the ability to question, criticize, and even mock ideas is central to a healthy, open society. Can I just quickly, uh, there are some people speaking about who, who have clearly sort of mugged up on Charlie Hebdo in the last couple of days and drawn from this tragedy whatever they like, but you really should know more if you're going to speak about this. And I have shown more about than you about this You're going to need to know more before you smear I'm not sparing, I'm not sparing all day. But let me just, one thing, one thing, thing you may not be aware of, one thing you may not be aware of, one thing you may not be aware of, but it's worth throwing into the discussion is that there are laws on the continent, particularly to do with anti-Semitism and particularly to do with the Holocaust. And let me just explain, because you may again not know this, but the historical reasons for that. France has historical reasons to be incredibly sensitive of anti-Semitism in particular, because within people's living memory, tens of thousands of Jews were put so on the trains and slaughtered. So we shouldn't be sensitive of Islamophobia? No, let me explain. Well, we shouldn't be sensitive there is, of it. Let me there's a secret website let called me, Google. Let, me, let, let, me, other let me finish the point I'm making. Let are very explain. specific let reasons. Let him explain. There are very specific explain. reasons. There are very specific reasons in France and Germany why some of those laws exist. But let me get back to the main point where you've been trying to divert us from. That's this. What is going on with this is an attempt not to make Islam be treated different, and not, not making uh, Charlie Hebdo. It wasn't to treat Islam differently or Muhammad. It was to treat 
Islam exactly the same way that secular free people have the right to talk about every religion. <laughs> and, and this gentleman and others are trying through the front door, some people through the front door with Kalashnikovs and others through the back door with this kind of weasel oh, talk. Yes, yes, what they do is try to make one religion free from being able to be criticized and it well, must be stopped. Well, people that are so Douglas Murray has nailed the hammer on the head on this one once again. Satire serves as a potent tool for societal reflection, allowing individuals to challenge power structures, dogmas, and societal norms. History is replete with examples where satire and criticism have contributed to social and political reform. Critiquing religious beliefs, including those of Islam, through satire or direct criticism is not inherently hate speech or an incitement to violence. Instead, it's a manifestation of the freedom to express dissenting viewpoints and to engage in open debate about the merits of different belief systems. It's crucial to distinguish between making fun of a religion or its figures and inciting hatred or violence against its followers. Hate speech, as legally defined in many jurisdictions, involves inciting violence or discrimination against people based on race, religion, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, or other protected statuses. Criticism or satire of religious ideas, as long as it does not cross into the realm of advocating for harm against individuals, does not constitute hate speech.